share with you is it's good to be back in worship. I think the devil's trying to work overtime on us. <laughs> um, Charlie, it's still a little too loud if you turn it down. Okay. We'll blast the people out on video. <laughs> so today, um, welcome back but to Modified Worship. And um, we're scheduled to have our annual meeting today, which is trying to meet state statutes and also meeting our constitution and, and all these things. And we have to have a minimum of 50 people. So I attended a forum here a while back on how to handle all this and things that could cut curveballs that could come our way. So right at this moment, we, have, we don't have 50 in attendance, we have 27. I know we got 10 people joining by Zoom and at least one of the person has indicated they will be here. So I'm making this verbal announcement to satisfy our constitution and the state statutes. If we do not have a quorum at 1020, we have to reschedule. And it would be in two weeks, that's the quickest we can have it. We have to have 10 day notice to everybody by email or mail and have to announce it two Sundays prior. So I'm letting you know if we don't have the meeting today, this is your one Sunday notification that we'll do the, um, we'll do the mulligan <laughs> on, on the 14th at 1020. So with that, um, we still may have some people um, come to the meeting. Um, I had one person said they were trying to dig out to get here and we'll see if they do. They weren't sure their, their country road wasn't even plowed yet and they were not gonna take a chance if that didn't happen, so. With that, I, I invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness. We're gonna do this for today because it fits the sermon and keeping with um, what we agreed with the health department to have upstairs and downstairs. I will do all the recitation. Please follow along in your heart and in your mind. 
So I will do all the verbal reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from no, whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In your hearts, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, on behalf of the congregation, I say this. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. The first reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord, my God, any more or ever again, see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The psalm is 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord studied by all who delight in him. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food, 
offer to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by our knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. Our gospel lesson today comes from the first chapter of Mark. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his, at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, what is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Um, I invite Sandy to come up to share a children's sermon. And having been downstairs, we don't have any children downstairs either. So you're just continuing like we have the past few weeks and preaching to children... We got Hannah, but she, she's in high school, so yeah. She, you're dragging your microphone. Sandy, behind you. Oh, well, good morning. It's good to see you guys here. All right. Well, good morning, boys and girls. I do miss seeing you here. I was hoping, really hoping to see some of you here, but maybe next week. So enjoy the snow. All right. Well, how many of you have ever <clears throat> given your teacher a present? Have you, any of you ever taken your teacher an apple? Well, I brought this apple today because it's something that students sometimes bring their teachers. And I want to tell you a story about a teacher that everyone in school loved. This was the first year for the teacher. It seemed that everything this teacher did was great. This teacher told good stories. When the teacher told stories, everyone in the class quietly listened because those stories were so interesting. Even the usual noisy students listened. This teacher could explain things to the students that were difficult to understand. Sometimes students would try to ask difficult questions, but this teacher always knew the answers. 
Well, there's another important thing I want you to know about this teacher. This teacher was interested in all of the students, not just certain ones. Every student was important to that teacher. Whenever one of the students in the teacher's class became ill, the teacher knew how to make that student better. This teacher was more than a teacher. He was like a doctor because he could make his students well. Very soon, that word went around that this teacher, about this teacher through the entire school. The teacher became so popular that all the students in the school wanted to be in his classroom. Students and parents were amazed. They kept on saying, asking one another, what is this? A new teacher with such authority? So as the year went on, the teacher's fame began to spread throughout the school district and into nearby towns. Now, I have a question for you. The teacher in this story is a very special teacher. Who do you think that teacher is? Well, the teacher in this story is Jesus. He went from town to town teaching about people about God. Everywhere that he went, people came to hear him. He even healed sick people. As he taught and healed people, more people heard about him. He became very famous. So when you go to school tomorrow, remember that Jesus was a teacher. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, we thank you for the teacher that we have in Jesus. In his precious name we pray, amen. All right, see you maybe next week, boys and girls. Well, it is good to, um, I have to be honest, it, it feels pretty good to be able to preach a sermon from here and actually see more than three or four faces that are helping do a video recording, okay? Um, I'll be glad when we finally do move back into phase five for many, many reasons. And, and, um, but I'm going to have to admit something. In getting ready for this sermon for today, hoping that we had a large attendance for today, for Sunday, back for a while, and for our annual meeting, and then looked at the weather forecast, and, and um, I said in my mouth, oh, non-sermon word. <laughs> okay. Because I was already struggling with writing a sermon after reading the assigned gospel for today. Because in the face of major health concerns of several people, of other devastating issues that some of us are facing and people that we know are facing. And then there is COVID with the potential new variant mutations. So I struggled how to find a word of hope for you today when today isn't coming off like we'd hoped for. This last year didn't come off as we were hoped for. And 2021 right now, I'm just holding my breath and praying. After hearing today's gospel, how Jesus did miraculous healings and casting out evil, why do we face what we face? I didn't know what to say. So I turned to some notes I had in my file. I keep both paper and electronic. And I discovered that I faced a similar situation like this exactly 21 years ago. And I was pondering this because I was in Manless at Trinity at the time. I was driving from Manless to Princeton to visit someone at Perry Memorial who was, uh, had, faced, was, was, had faced serious health concerns. And on top of that, I had people in other hospitals. 
And I had others who had personal problems that almost seemed demonic. So as I drove, the storyline from part of a rerun that a little house in the prairie was filling my mind. You may recall that television series. It's based on a book series written by Laura Ingalls Wilder. I read all of those when I was in grade school. I think I've seen all the TV shows. Uh, um, So, our then, 21 years ago, our then grade school son Alex was watching the show early that morning as I was getting ready to head to Princeton. He was ill and home from school under the care of mom that day. And I was getting ready to stop at the church office before heading to Princeton, but I just had to watch that TV show for a few minutes. Walnut Grove, Minnesota was in chaos, and it involved the town's minister. That caught my attention. Must be something about being a pastor, okay? Anyway, a circuit-riding preacher was drawing large crowds from the community and even strangers from a distance with his big tent revival in Walnut Grove. The new preacher had charisma, And people were being healed of illnesses and problems being solved. So many of the town's people were under the big tent that only a handful, a few, attended regular Sunday worship in that one-room schoolhouse with their resident pastor. The town was mesmerized by the revivalist. They were, as like the Bible's passage today said, they were all amazed and they kept on asking one another, what is this? You see, one of their own, a young boy, had been supposedly healed. Earlier, the town's doctor had diagnosed the lad with an appendicitis and recommended surgery. But the father was skeptical of such a surgery in the 1800s, which was somewhat new, somewhat new to many people and not commonly done. Sound familiar? His question was, was it safe? So the father took his son to the revival and caught the high-flying preacher off guard. In the presence of the town doctor, the preacher screamed and yelled with his hand on the boy. The guests of the crowd could be heard when the boy suddenly no longer was screaming in pain. They all yelled, Cured! At this, the traveling preacher approached and asked the town's resident pastor to share his pulpit and establish his congregation so that the traveling preacher could use it as a home base and to funnel his funds that he was collecting in the offerings while the big tent moved to the neighboring counties. Oh, the wise pastor from Walnut Grove said, no. For he suspected that the revivalist was really a prophet who did not speak the word of truth from God. A church war began. The preacher healer vowed to establish a competing congregation in Walnut Grove. And besides, he had most of the town in his following. So Walnut Grove's once beloved pastor began packing his bags because he and the town's doctor were no longer trusted. Then tragedy struck. The young boy who was supposedly cured by the revivalist was now rushed into town by horse and wagon. Doc, come quickly, cried the father. The appendices had ruptured. And the young boy was already dead. Followed by the town's doctor and pastor, the father carried the boy's corpse into the middle of a revival meeting. With the tent filled, the revivalist declared that it was God's will. And with emotions on high, the father tearfully agreed with the traveling preacher. The whole tent went into praise. 
Walnut Grove's doctor and departing pastor were only supported by a handful of residents. Now, this is where I had to leave the parsonage to go make that hospital call. So later when I got home, I asked Alex how it ended. He enthusiastically told me that Pa Ingalls had delivered a load of lumber from Walnut Grove's sawmill to a neighboring town where everyone was raving about this traveling preacher who had just come to town. Pa watched as the very same strangers, supposedly healed in Walnut Grove, were healed again of the very same ailments. The next day, the false prophet was very surprised when most of Walnut Grove appeared in his tent and yet another town to witness the sham before he passed the offering plate. Walnut Grove's wise resident pastor was correct in recognizing that this other preacher was not proclaiming God's truth. I guess this brings me back to my struggle on writing a sermon for today, especially reading our first lesson from Deuteronomy that Sue read a few minutes ago, where God says to the people, anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, God says, I myself will hold accountable. These are some heavy words for you who sit here in the sanctuary or maybe at home. But the next verse has an even sharper consequence for a preacher. Our first lesson says, Any prophet who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded, that prophet shall die. No wonder a sermon on today's lesson was hard to write for this week. Yet I also got hung up on Jesus commanding an unclean spirit to leave. An exorcism. Then I looked at the scripture lessons for the upcoming Sundays. Jesus goes about the countryside casting out demons and curing the sick. Jesus even gives the disciples authority to do the same, and they travel by themselves without Jesus. And as it says in Mark, they cast out many demons and anointed many who were sick and cured them. Why can't we do that? Why can't I do that? You don't know how many times I wish I could lay my hand on some of you and say, Be healed of your disease. Or to be able to cast out the demonic evil turmoil that may have afflicted you or many. Especially now, all those impacted in any way from our current pandemic. As we have many on our prayer list, We all know people who battle cancer or struggle with heart disease or from strokes or or arthritis. You and I probably both know people nearby and hundreds of miles from here who live with deep depression, mental illness, or dementia. I just learned yesterday that my um, soon-to-be 99 but 98-year-old aunt who's battled Alzheimer's for 20 years Earlier last week, fell and broke a hip, and she passed away yesterday. For 20 years, she barely knew anyone. And our list goes on and on. And these are all the demons of sorts that we might face. For you, I wish that I could, could command these to leave. But then I fear that I might be like that false prophet. So I have to ask, why was this part of Jesus' ministry when he walked on the earth? I think we first have to understand the mindset of the people in those days, that they felt that such evil conditions in the day of Jesus were believed to be directly the result of a sin committed by you or maybe one of your family members. 
That's why you had the demon or the ailment. It was thought then, and even by some today, that if you do wrong, you will be afflicted. Look out. So for Jesus to be about the message of God's truth found only in God's unconditional love and grace-filled forgiveness, in many cases, Jesus had to first cast out the demons and heal the sick so that people would believe that as our Savior, Jesus came to announce forgiveness. Let's jump to the Gospel according to John for an example. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. And let's go back to our gospel for the day from Mark in another section of that gospel. In fact, we just studied this in our Thursday morning Bible study here a couple weeks ago, this passage. It says, Then some people came bringing to Jesus a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. But so that you may believe that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Did you notice? In this case, Jesus first forgives the paralytic's sins before eliminating the physical evil. I do wish that I could do both of those things for each of you. But I also pray that I am never, never a false prophet. I do know from my study of Scripture that as a called pastor, I am commanded to proclaim this to you. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for His sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by His authority, and only by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. With this good news, I know I'm proclaiming the truth of what, why Jesus came to be with us. Still, what about those so-called demons of life that we can face daily? Whether it be snowstorms or pandemics or health issues or, or loss financially or of loved ones or sometimes I think we believe that we are not able to make a difference in the battle against evil especially in our current times sometimes I think we underestimate the power prayer has on the physical well-being of others and ourselves well I just gave you a glimpse of next week's sermon. So, in like any good television two-part series, and this one's a Little House on the Prairie sermon, I say, to be continued. 
Megan, would you um, share the Apostles' Creed in song for us? I believe in God the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Pilate was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For all who share the gospel and pro proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders for the church and its ministries. Work through the ministry of your people, especially LRI Lutheran Parish, all disciples and congregation throughout the world, and the ELCA. Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and Bishop Jeff Clemens. For all God's work in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those with, living with HIV AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need, and today we especially pray for Jim, Steve, Peter, Shirley, Diane, Judy, Doris, Shirley, Alice, Jane, George, Paul, Elizabeth, Fran, Anne, Porter, Terry, Marilyn, Mary, Donna, Jeff, Dana, Beth, Deborah, John, Tim, Lloyd, Nancy, Joy, Mona, Rod, Samantha, Tricia, Deb, Jessica, Scott, Angelica, Sally, Sandy, Braden, Kendall, Karen, Ruth, Jeff, Gary, Wilfred, Lisa, Pam, Lauren, Mike and Chris, Teresa, Scott, Sharon, and all victims of disasters and violence, and those impacted in any way by our pandemic. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides. For the concerns of this congregation, those who travel, those absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place, and for all of their needs in our community. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism, and thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord. Comfort the grieving families of John, Julie, Norma, Deb, Lucas, Susie, 
and all those who have lost loved ones and friends from the COVID-19 pandemic. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We continue with the sacrament. It's good to be able to share the sacrament today. I invite you to stand. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name in prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Beloved, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Come be fed. Please be seated. And um, so we can kind of work on a couple things here. Mike is going to, uh, if you're going to stay for the meeting, just stay in your seat after you receive communion. Mike is going to distribute that today. Um, and um, if you are not going to stick around for the meeting, assuming we have people who show up at 1020, um, as I said, this is going to be a slow process for a meeting, and it's going to take a lot of patience. My mic's getting ready. I know this is a solemn time, but you do know the prayer for patience, don't you? God, I want patience, and I want it right now. So thank you for being here today. Receive this communion invitation. that Mike will give to you, and I'm going to do, say, say this, blessing or benediction in case some of those are leaving. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Lead us in some music.
Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst in my sight. Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Amen.